Buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Time now for Rocky Jordan, brought to you today by Del Monte Tomato Products. Not far from the Musk Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Cafe Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Del Monte presents Rocky Jordan and this week's story, Pattern for Revenge. It was getting along toward midnight, but business in the tambourine was still booming. I had just stepped over to help behind the bar when I saw her come in the front door. Young, 22 or 3 maybe, blonde and pretty in a brown suit with hat and gloves to match. She glanced nervously around, saw what she wanted, and headed for a back table where a guy about her age was finishing up his fifth double bourbon. Right away, a big argument started, and I moved toward the front, figuring to keep out of it. But then she turned looking for help, so I waved the waiter away and went back myself. No. Oh, Jacques, please, I you're not stay safe. here. Get out, like I said, I told you. I stay here. Anything I can do, lady? Oh, I'm most oh. sorry, monsieur. Please, Jacques, we must go. The no, gentleman no, will help you. No, I do not need help. I know what I'm to do. What's he talking about? He does not know what he's saying. If you would assist him to a taxi. Oh, sure. All right, Jacques. Uh, Everything's all right. Mm, Come on, Jacques, up we go. Do not touch me, Jordan. Come on, easy. Uh, let me go, all right? Jacques! Please. Oh, he can't hear you. Had one too many, lady. He's passed out. Oh, there's a cot back in my office. We'll put him there for a while. Uh, are you sure he will be all right? Sure. All he needs is some sleep. You just run along. I'll let you know when he feels better. Very well, monsieur. I am Roxanne Bellon. Jacques is my husband. I will be at our room at the Hotel Royale. You will call then? Sure. Just don't worry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Roxanne Ballon quickly turned and went out. A couple of the waiters and I carried her husband back to the office and laid him out on the cot. I sent the waiters back to their jobs and was about to go out front again myself when the phone opened up. Tambourine, Jordan speaking. <laughs> Hello, who is this? It has been a long time. A very, very long time. Is it not Jordan? What's it about? Who are you? You... Do not know, then? <laughs> Why should I? Come on, get to the point. Jordan, the time is running out. Start counting the hours and the minutes. You do not know where or when it will come. Look, if this is a bum joke, cut it off. A joke? <laughs> <laughs> joke? You shall learn only too soon. All right, tell me all about it. Have I not said enough? Revenge, Jordan. A debt long overdue. Payable with death. What? Hello. Hello. Oh, great. All right, hello. Uh, I can hear you, Jordan. Oh, hello, Sam. I'm sorry, I expected somebody else. Your agitation does not surprise me in the least. What does that mean? It means that I must talk with you, and most urgently. Well, I'm listening. At headquarters, Jordan, as soon as possible. Oh, it's a busy night here, Sam. I got customers. This is for your own good, Jordan. Now, will you come at once, or shall I send for you? Uh, all right, Sam. I'll be right over. Jordan, you were wise to come directly here. Well, you look relieved, Sam. Yes, indeed I am. On second thought, I realized that I should have given you full warning... Uh, just supposing we get to the point, huh? We shall. Just as soon as you have told me if you know of any recent threat or danger to your life. Oh, no more than the usual. Why? Uh, well, I have here a slip of paper on which are written the names of four men of Cairo. The first three names are crossed off. I've got an idea who's the fourth. A moment. 
The men whose names are crossed off are now dead. Victims of violent murder. Where did this list come from? It was found on the body of the most recent victim only tonight. Go on. <clears throat> it is not the first list of this kind to be found. On each person killed was such a list, with each man already dead crossed off and a new name added as the next intended victim, left there undoubtedly by the murderer. Mm, somebody's playing quite a game. Yes, as you say. This is the work of a warped mentality, someone with a fixation of vengeance, perhaps. One intent not only on murder, but in striking terror into the heart of his next victim. Well, all right, Sam, get it over with. On the list found tonight is added a new name, one yet to be crossed off. The name of Rocky Jordan. I thought so. Let me see that list. No one is to see it, Jordan. Sam, if I'm next, I gotta know something. I things. intend that the police deal with this matter in their own way. You got some ideas? None that I care to discuss at this time. In the meantime, I suggest that you act with the greatest discretion. Sure, Sam. I'll take care of myself. I fully intend that you do. I'm taking no more chances. Sergeant Greco, step in, please. At once, Captain Sabayas. Ah, hello, Greco. Ah, good evening, Mr. Jordan. Now, uh, Greco... Uh, uh, Captain Sabayas, if you will permit me, I have given much thought to this matter of the killings... Should you see fit to assign me to the case... That I am doing. I have a task for you. You may place full trust in me. Good. Until further notice, you will accompany Jordan as his bodyguard. But, uh, Capitan... Save it, uh, Sam. Call it off. I don't need Greco tagging along. Uh, uh, Capitan, uh, would not one with less experience in more important matters, a man new to the... Enough, perhaps, Greco. Uh, it will be all. Your command, Captain Sabaya. At your service... Mr. Jordan. I gave it up, too, and went on out with Greco following sullenly behind. Well, if that's the way Sam wanted it, so did I. Only now I knew the threatening phone call had been nobody's joke. When we got back to the tambourine, it was closed. I unlocked the front door, and when I started inside, Greco moved to follow. Oh, no, this is as far as you go. I have my orders, Mr. Jordan. I am to stay with you. And I happen to know the law, and I say you stay here in the street unless you want to get a warrant. Very well. But I warn you, do not attempt to leave your cafe without me. I will be here waiting. <laughs> I'll sleep on it. Pleasant dreams, Greco. I started back through the cafe, not bothering to turn on the light. I was halfway back when I remembered Jacques Bellon, the drunk I'd left on my cot in the office. And I was two steps farther when it happened. <laughs> Shots came from behind my office door. Right away, I was running back, slamming open the door just in time to hear somebody scramble out the back door to the alley. I don't generally go chasing after people with guns, but I got to the alley just in time to hear fleeing footsteps as the figure faded into the night. Then I heard heavier footsteps coming from the other way. Stop at once! Who's there? It's me, Greco. Step it up, will you? Mr. Jordan, I want you not to leave your cafe without oh, me. Oh, cut it, Greco. Get after that guy. He's heading for the Sharia Farah. I saw no one go that way. Take my word for it now. Get going. I have my express orders, Mr. Jordan. They are to stay with you. Yeah, it'll take more than that to win a promotion. Enough. Now I demand to know what the shooting was about. Okay, Greco, come on. We'll both find out. <laughs> We went back inside my office through the alley door, and there I cut on a light. Yeah, my guest was still on the cot. He hadn't moved. And it wasn't hard to realize exactly what had happened. I knew that all three shots fired at close range into the body of Jacques Bellon had been meant for me. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Last week, you may remember, we told you the secret is out. Yes, good news for catsup lovers. Del Monte catsup is made with pineapple vinegar. I've always known Del Monte catsup was good. But what's this about pineapple vinegar? Just this. Pineapple vinegar is the secret of Del Monte catsup's marvelous flavor. Catsup experts say the finer the vinegar, the better the catsup flavor. And pineapple vinegar is superlative vinegar. Del Monte makes it, and only Del Monte has it. It isn't so much that you taste the vinegar, it's what this pineapple vinegar does for the other ingredients that makes it so important. Nobody could miss the way it brings out the best in catsup flavor, the way it accents the rich goodness of those vine-ripened tomatoes Del Monte uses. 
and the way it blends them into a catsup that makes the plainest food so much better. So next time you make up your shopping list, include Del Monte catsup. You'll say to... Del Monte catsup is wonderful. I never tasted such marvelous flavor. And best of all, it costs so little for what you get. And now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, Pattern for Revenge. Well, we were sure of just two things. First, that there was a maniac loose in Cairo with a well-laid-out plan for killing a lot of people. Just why was anybody's guess. Second, that I was supposed to be his next victim. Only now, Jacques Bellon, lying dead in my office, had been the innocent victim of the shots intended for me. Right away, Sergeant Greco was his officious self. He planted himself between me and Bellon and told me to call Sabaya. And I did. Only while I was on the phone, Greco didn't know I saw him quickly pry a wad of paper from the fingers of the victim, unfold it, read it, and quickly shove it in his pocket. It wasn't long until Sam Sabaya came striding in with several of his uniformed men. Stay by the entrances, all of you. Yes, Captain Sabaya Bay. Now, Greco. The victim lies here on the cot, Captain Sabaya Bay. I did not allow Mr. Jordan to touch him. That's right, Sam. Greco should win a lot and of strikes. you will keep silent until spoken to, Mr. Jordan. Yeah, maybe you'd like for me to keep quiet. A moment, both of you. Now, Jordan, about this man who is dead. Well, I'd just come in the front way when I heard the shot, Sam. When I got back here, somebody was ducking out the alley door. Greco, where were you at this time? It will interest you to know that Mr. Jordan was most uncooperative. He did not permit me to enter the building. It was his right, however... Have Greco tell the rest of it, Sam. He had plenty of chance to go after the killer. That is his story, Capitan. I saw no one. Besides, it was my task to see to Mr. Jordan's welfare. Yeah, you took care of me. Fine. Enough of this! We'll see what his pockets hold. In the meantime, Jordan, what do you know of this man? Uh, his name's Jacques Bellon. He's drinking in my cafe and got more than he could hold. I put him on the cot there to sleep it off. Never had a chance to wake up. Hmm. A card here in his wallet. Uh, you are correct about his name. And his wife's waiting for him at the Hotel Royale. What? Most forgettable. Hmm. A small gun in his pocket. Not fired. Lots of people carry guns. As you say. You will realize now that my warning to you was well advised. Well, sure, Sam, but what about the rest? I want some information. Jordan, the police are quite capable Look, of... all I know is that Jacques Ballon would be alive right now if it hadn't been for me. I'd like to see it cleared up. I can well understand your feelings, Jordan. However, you have no reason to feel responsible. Well, I don't see it that way. Look, the least you can do is give me the names of the others on that list, the others who were killed. Very well. I will read them to you. First is the name of Ali Alkar, a shoemaker. Next, El Faroum, a pasha. And finally, Benny Christian, a Coptic. Well, shoemaker, a pasha, a Coptic, and me, a cafe owner. They ought to mean something. But... Then you do not remember. Sam, what possible relationship do those men have with each other or to a killer? Uh, I got a hunch you know. I do, Jordan. But I've told you enough. Now, something puzzles me. What? Were well, these killing, uh, according to the pattern, we would have found a new list on Jacques Bellon naming the next intended victim. There was none here, unless it was taken before I arrived. Uh, uh, Captain Sabai, uh, may I presume to suggest once again that I might be of value to this case? Uh, wait a minute, Greco. You're not going anywhere. You're my bodyguard, remember? Bodyguard? Well, a most interesting change of heart for you, Jordan. But it is my full intention that he stay with you. And this time, Greco, do not let him out of your sight. Your command, Captain Sabaya Bay. Once the killer learns of his mistake, he will most surely return again. Sam checked around the office some more, and finally the body of Jacques Bellon was taken away. That left me with a job I didn't want but couldn't escape. A trip to the Hotel Royale to see Roxanne. Greco trailed along, but now he was silent. His glance avoided my eyes. Ordinarily, I'd have felt like laughing at him, but not this time. It was almost morning when I knocked at Roxanne's door. After a little wait, she opened the door, clutching a dressing gown around her. Oh, Monsieur Jordan, come in. You've been told, Roxanne? About Jacques? 
Yes, I know. Who is this with you? Oh, nobody. Just my bodyguard. Bodyguard. <laughs> oh? I had to set something straight in your mind about your husband. Please, I do not blame you. Maybe you should. Jack had nothing to do with his death. Those shots were meant for me. For you? That's right. Somebody thought he was killing me, not your husband. But, but how can you be sure? Did you have a different idea? No, except that... Monsieur Jordan, I must confess that recently Jacques and I were not happy. You don't have to say anything you don't want to. But I must talk to someone. Jacques and I had been married but a short time. I knew little of his life before that, and it did not matter. He was very devoted. But recently a strange change came over him. He was nervous and upset as though frightened. Frightened of what, Roxanne? I do not know. Also, he began drinking. A bottle was with him always... And he would go away at night, refusing to say where. I did everything I could. I'd been searching for him when I found him at your cafe tonight. And, as you saw, he would not come with me. Well, that must have been about something else. Believe me, if I'd known there was any danger... You need not feel that way. What is done, is done. But if I could help now with, with money... Uh... There is money. And that is something else, Monsieur Jordan. Yeah? I will show you... In this drawer. Hey, it's a lot of cash to have lying around. Yet it is there. A and I do not know where it came from. Let's just say your husband was a good provider, huh? Look, Roxanne, somehow I'm going to square all this. You need not do it for me, monsieur. Then let's just say I'm doing it for Jacques. By the time I unlocked the tambourine door, it was broad daylight. This time, I let Greco come on in. I had reasons for keeping him with me for now. And just as we got inside, the phone opened up. We both headed for the office, and all at once, Greco got real busy again. It is possibly from headquarters. I will take Oh, no, you don't, Greco. Uh, Mr. Jordan, I insist. Hello, tambourine. Jordan speaking. Uh, who is that, Mr. Jordan? Cut it, Greco. Hello. Uh, you seem to live a charm life, Jordan. But now your luck has run out. All right, keep talking, mister. Death can strike many times. It is quite useless for you to hope that I will fail again. Mr. Jordan, you are hiding something from me. It is my duty to know who is on that phone. Oh, no, you don't. I but command man. you to give me that phone and keep your hands off of me. All right, Greco, take it. He's all yours. That is better. Hello. It's the Sergeant Greco of the Cairo Police. Who is there? That little scuffle with Greco is what I've been waiting for. The chance to reach in his pocket and pull out the slip of paper he'd palmed off the body of Jacques Villon. I had no time to look at it before Greco turned from the phone. The caller had hung up, as I knew he would. It was my move now, but first I had to shake Greco. So right away, I was out on the street walking fast with a protesting Greco at my elbow. In a little while, I'd let him into the Chouffon Bazaar, where shops had already opened for the day and the crowds were moving in. I kept going until Greco began to puff a little, then I was suddenly running. Wait, Mr. Dalton... Stop! He Greco had a way of pushing Stop people rather than trying to go around them, and he was soon floundering in the crowds far behind. When I was sure Greco was off my trail, I stopped in a doorway for a quick look at the paper I'd picked from Greco's pocket. It was all I wanted. The names were there. Ali Alkar, El Faroon Pasha, Benny Christian, and my name next. All crossed off, and a new name added below, Ahmed Najim. Well, it meant no more to me than the rest, but a phone directory told me there was just one Ahmad Najim listed in Cairo, so I was in luck. I lost no time in getting to his place on the Sharia El Mahdi. It turned out to be a poultry shop. Nobody was up front, so I tried the door to the back room. A little man with a thin beard and a fez was puttering around some big loaded chicken crates stacked high along the wall. Ah, Allah be with you, Effendi. Are you Ahmad Najim? Allah, as you say. Ahmad Nazim, the poultry merchant. Oh, we met before somewhere. My name's Jordan. Jordan? Uh, your face is familiar, but at the moment I do not recall... Oh, we've got to remember. Maybe it was a long time ago. Uh, perhaps, but a friendly... Hey, wait a minute. A shoemaker, a pasha, a Coptic, a cafe owner, and a poultry merchant. They all could have only one thing in common. So? A courtroom five years ago. Oh, but of course, Effendi Jordan. Together we were key witnesses at the trial of the despicable Alex Mandel. Sure, Mandel. I should have remembered that voice. Oh, it was something truly to remember, was it not? The shouting Mandel protesting his innocence of the murders, the alibis of his lying witnesses. But then when we, the respected men of Cairo, 
told what we knew. Mandel's fate was sealed, was it not? Sure, it was our testimony that convicted him. Yes, indeed. Such rage I will never forget. All his idle threats as they took him away. Well, they weren't idle threats, Ahmed. The murderer said many things to us in hatred, but we... we... Hey, what did you say? Alex Mandel meant every word of it. He's broken out of prison. He's loose and he's in Cairo and he's out to kill every man who had anything to do with his conviction. Oh, but that is impossible. No sane man would... That's be... right, no sane man. Mandel's already at work. He's killed three of his prey. He tried for me last night. Now you're next. Oh, but it cannot be... Mr. Jordan, I, I, I will tell him. I did not wish to speak against him. I, I was forced to do it. it. It was you and the others who convicted him. I, oh, I will cut tell... it, Ahmed. You think he listened to anybody? No, Mr. Jordan, you must help me. Please, Effendi, hide me somewhere. We'll do better than that. We're going right to the police. Uh, the police? That is it. Yes, yes. We will go to the police now, at once. Uh... Oh, no. Mandel. Oh, Felix Mandel. Mandel, no, do not shoot, no! In Allah's name, no! I, I did not wish to witness. No! As Ahmed slumped away from the door, I dived in. Mandel's gun clattered away. I slammed him against the tottering chicken crates, and then we were down and rolling. Finally, I was on top of him with my hands at his throat. I was about to end it up, and a heavy step at the door turned my head, and there was Sergeant Greco. What is going out of here? Stop in the name of the Lord. Keep away, Greco, I'll handle him. So, Mr. Jordan, it is you, rolling like one in the streets. Get out oh, of stop it. Let go of me, Greco. For the last time, Mr. Jordan, get up. Greco yanked on me just enough to loosen my grip. That's when Mandel twisted from under me, grabbed the gun, and was on his feet and backing up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jordan, the tables turn so quickly. This time I do not fail. See what you've done, Greco? Tell him, Jordan. Tell the very officious policeman who I am. He's the man you want, Greco. He even took the list of names from Jacques' body without Sabaya's knowing. Hoping you could win yourself a gold star. So, you took it from me. And this man is... Yeah, Felix Mandel. He just claimed another victim there on the floor. So, I, uh, I, 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 I did not know. Well, you know now. <laughs> enough, Jordan, enough. The time is long over but you. I must dispose of you now and get on with my work. There are so many. They who spoke so bravely against me in the court, but now they turn to groveling cowards in the face of death. You're not too careful who you shoot at, are you? Even innocent people like Jacques Ballon. Jacques Ballon? <laughs> innocent, you say? <laughs> Jordan, I will tell you something. Yeah? The man who so sadly died in your place was at the Café Tambourine to kill you. What? Are you sure about that? <laughs> of, course, of course. Did I not send him there? I wonder if his wife knew. No, 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 no. That was all I needed. His fear that I would tell her of his past life. As one of my gunmen. So I sent him to do my killing. And I paid him well. I know that much now. But his fear was too much. I knew I had to follow to see that my work was done. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not a paradox that Jacques Bellon should be lying in a drunken sleep where I thought I would find you? Hmm? <laughs> but, but now we stand face to face. No, I will be sure. I'd stall as long as I could. I'd been watching the chicken crates which tottered precariously behind Mandel where we'd slammed him against the wall. They needed one more push. And Mandel did it as he backed against him and raised the gun. The chicken crates began to topple and I dodged away as they came down. The first one caught Mandel on the head and the rest piled on top. I moved in, grabbed the gun, dragged Mandel to his feet, but he didn't stay there. His knees crumbled and he fell back to the floor. Then I looked around just in time to see Greco poke his head up through a broken crate. A very live rooster perched on his shoulder, picking at the tassel on his battered fez. Well, there was some crowing after that, but not from Sergeant Greco. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. You know, folks, if you were to ask your wife what she considers is the best way to start off a meal, I bet she'd say... Why, with a chilled glass of tomato juice, of course. That's the perfect way to start a meal. And she'd be so right. The refreshing flavor of a chilled glass of Del Monte tomato juice really whets the appetite, starts the occasion off on the right note of enjoyment. Del Monte tomato juice has just the right tang, a pleasing, sunny flavor you get only from the very best tomatoes, fully ripened right on the vine. 
Del Monte tomato juice is fresh tasting. Yes, indeed. All the rich flavor of fully ripened tomatoes. Del Monte tomato juice is natural tasting. Close quality control by Del Monte assures you of true natural flavor. Del Monte tomato juice is refreshing. That's right. Real tomato flavor that makes you ask for more. Fresh tasting. Natural tasting. And refreshing. That's Del Monte tomato juice. Look for the green can with the familiar red Del Monte shield. Keep several cans in the refrigerator. You will find they come in mighty handy. Back now to Rocky Jordan. All it took was a taxi ride to police headquarters. Greco, Felix Mandel, and me. Sam sent some men out to take care of the late Ahmed Najim. Greco hurried off real quick, saying he wanted to clean up. After booking Mandel and putting him on the grill for a while, Sam slammed a cell door behind him. So much for Felix Mandel, Jordan. Yeah, it about closes the book. In many ways. Jordan, you need no longer fear responsibility for the death of Jacques Bellon, knowing now that he had actually come to kill you. Then he was really one of Mandel's gang before Mandel was sent up? Yes. In fact, he spent a short term in prison himself, but it seems that since his marriage a year ago, he had tried to live a circumspect life. So Mandel broke out, came back and put him to work. Yes. The threat of what might be revealed to his wife and the offer of money were too much for the unfortunate man. Hmm. Oh, come into my office, Jordan. There are still a few questions to complete my dossier on Mandel. Oh, why not get it all from Greco? Well, oh, you, you know, it is most interesting how Greco was so anxious to get away just now. He had so very little to say. Well, he had a big night, Sam. <laughs> so it seems. Now, Jordan, how did you and Greco learn that the poultry merchant, Ahmed Najim, was to be the next victim? I'm waiting. Oh, look, Sam, you've got Mandel. Isn't that enough? Uh, could it be that a list of names was left on the body of Jacques Bellon and that it was kept from me? Now, why would anybody do a thing like that? <laughs> Jordan, one could hardly say that you have any great respect for Sergeant Greco. However... He tries hard. Indeed, he does. Very well. I shall ask no more questions for your sake and his, Jordan. I already promised, Sam. No more questions. <laughs> you may go, Jordan. I, I shall give uh, Greco uh, your regards. For the finest in tomato flavor, enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and canned tomatoes. And Del Monte tomato juice. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Man with No Name. <laughs> Whenever you want a quick dessert or a wonderful salad, think of Del Monte peaches. Sliced or halved, they have a luscious tenderness, a natural sweetness you will find only in pre-ripened fruit. Yes, for truly delicious peaches, buy Del Monte, the best-liked peaches in the whole wide world. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 